Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi and welcome to my little review of the Canon SureShot BF um, budget 35mm film camera. I'm Rob from robnonphoto.com and that's to give me, I've just come back from a quick photo walk um, out of Gosport. Suzanne and Oliver are out down the gym so I took my opportunity just to drive down there and take some pictures of some kind of semi-industrial area. So. It's about 26 degrees outside, which for the UK is pretty, pretty that's Celsius, that's pretty, pretty damn hot. So uh, I'm a little bit flustered. But anyway, back to the Canon Sure Shot BF. Now, these were budget 35mm film cameras, so it takes 35mm film, you know, the stuff that comes on the rolls. Um, nice and cheap to buy, fairly cheap to process, you can still get it processed at lots of different places, you know, no matter where you are in the world. And one of the, uh, you know, the, we have at the moment a bit of a renaissance with film. Um, there's lots of uh, projects going on to uh, to revive film and get more people shooting film. You've got uh, like the Lomography, um, who make their own cameras now, uh, famous for the LCA, and also uh, produce their own film as well, which they sell. And you've got people like the Impossible Project, who have revived Polaroid film, your SX70, your Spectre, and your... Um, your, your instant cameras are that way and generally the, there's been a move back towards film for for enthusiasts um, even if it's only for just for a short period just to try it out um, and personally speaking I mean I shoot film quite regularly um, I enjoy shooting film uh, I enjoy the fact that it slows me down um, I like not having to worry about post-processing too much with colour photography you kind of just take the photo um, get it developed and kind of you know and there it is there's no point really messing around with it too much you let the post processing is done by the film that you buy uh, but I also like shooting black and white film and then develop it myself and, and scanning it I mean I have to admit though you know digital yeah the, the advantages of digital when I'm shooting with my DSLR where I can shoot you know as many photos I've, as I want and basically each frame is free I mean I had to buy the camera and then if I want to print them out but you know I can I can I can uh, take a lot more photos and your learning curve tends to be uh, quite steep with, uh, with with digital because you can see what you're doing straight away. The danger of digital though is that often we take too many photos and maybe we don't always learn from our mistakes, we tend to spray and pray a lot. So if you haven't tried out film before I'd definitely say give it a go. And if you go down to your local car boot sale, your thrift store, your charity sh store, chances are you'll see cameras like this going very, very cheaply. You shouldn't spend more than two or three pounds on, on this sort of camera because it's not a quality camera. You know, at the time it would have been a budget camera. As I said before, they take 35mm film, but the first thing to do whenever you're looking at these is just pop open the battery compartment. If there's any batteries in there, uh, take them out and then have a look inside the battery compartment and see if the batteries have leaked or not. If the batteries have leaked, put it to one side, move on and get a different one. Um, if it's got batteries in there and they're okay, obviously try and turn it on and see if it works. One of the tricks when you go to car boots and thrift store stores is to bring some AA batteries with you so that if you come across a camera that takes AAs, you can pop them in and test it. And if you can, you know, turn it on, you know, have a look through the viewfinder. Um, press the button, does it Does it take a photograph? Uh, look at it from the front, can you see the shutter opening up that way? So, why the sure shot BF and why the review? Well, it, you could be fooled into thinking that in order to enjoy film photography, um, you have to buy expensive film cameras. And I use the word expensive relatively because they're a lot cheaper now than they were when they were new. Um, but you, you, know, you don't have to um, spend a hundred pounds on an SLR or you know a thousand pounds on on something like a Hasselblad system you can enjoy it with 35 millimeter film in these budget cameras and you don't have to buy an expensive compact as well you know you don't have to get a Lomography um, slim and wide or whatever or these special cameras that they can take costs you know 40 50 pounds and upwards you don't have to get a Diana you don't have to get a baby Diana you don't have to get a Holger you can get similar results if not maybe a little bit better with these little babies because the beauty with these mass-produced 
Canon cameras in this particular case, but they're all similar, is that they tend to be, as long as it works, it hasn't been dropped or, or dunked in the sea or anything, they're pretty damn reliable. Um, and what I really like about cameras like the BF10 is that it's fit, fixed focus, so you know there's no focus involved, you just look through it and take the picture. Um, it has a built-in flash, I mean you don't tend to use, I don't tend to use that that much because I tend to take pictures outside. Most importantly, it takes 35mm film, cheap and uh, uh, cheap to process. But as I said before, it takes AA batteries. None of these are uh, different ones because the problem with some of these cameras, 35mm cameras, and this goes with SLRs or the compacts as well, sometimes they take unusual cameras like CR123s, um, LV5As, there's lots of different ones. And you end up spending quite a lot of money on a battery for a camera that only costs you three quid. And you might not, excuse me, it, and if film is kind of an adjunct to your digital photography, you might not use the camera that much, so you might only take a couple of rolls of film, put it in a drawer, come back to it in 12 months later, and that battery's gone flat, and you've got another £15 or so you've got to spend on a battery. Obviously, if you shop around and go on eBay, go on Seven Day Shop or something, you get batteries quite cheap. But if you can get a compact with a, that takes AA batteries, Happy days, because you'll know you'll always have access to them. Um, these, you know, it, it's built <laughs> very, very cheaply, um, but it does have a very large viewfinder, which is great for composition. You can see what you're doing, especially in low light. So, auto wind, nice and easy. Um, how can you get more out of your, your little compact? Now, what, I, what I'm about to advise you to do now might be a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, heretical. Um, to some people because what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be damaging the camera in a kind of way because these cameras were built to a to a cost um, they were built to be very easy to use you know there's no controls over it beyond um, it has a timer on the top you can press so if you want to be in on the photo and there's a button to rewind the camera and I think actually there's a flash button right so you can turn the flash off you know happy days and that's it um, Things like the ISO and everything are set by the camera because it will read the, the code on the film. So, what you can do, so they take very competent photographs, you know, nice photographs, not particularly sharp, um, but they, you know they're well exposed and they and they look, you know, like, like a film uh, photo you'd expect. But if you want to make them a little bit more interesting, what you do is take a permanent black marker with a thick nib, and very carefully, and this is what I've done to this one. You put it on the edge of the, the, the uh, edge of the uh, lens, and then just draw a circle, one little circle. Maybe go over, go around it twice, and then leave it. <laughs> and what we're doing there is we're actually darkening the edge of the lens so that we'll get an, a vignette on our uh, on our photographs, which can look quite interesting. Now, personally speaking, in post processing, so I'm editing my digital photos, I don't like adding vignettes. Um, I don't know why. Um, I used to a lot on my photos, but now I don't anymore. And I kind of, when I see vignettes obviously added to photos, I kind of think, well, that's a, that's a vignette that's been added, obviously. But for some reason, in my strange mentality, I don't mind if the camera or the lens has added the vignette. There's something about the way that's doing it. And, and you could argue the fact that I'm adding something to the camera to make it produce a vignette. You know, it all gets a little bit complicated. But what it means is you'll get photos out of this that look suspiciously similar to ones you get out of more expensive lomography cameras and, and cameras like that. Now the other thing I did with this camera, which I don't know how much effect it had on it, but with this type of camera, the way it works out the exposure is with a little photo cell and a little circuit inside, but it doesn't do it through the lens, or at least I don't think it does. It does it through a little sensor up here. Um, so that means that if we put that vignette round our um, around our lens, what will happen is the edges will get darker and the, the middle will be the same. But again, to increase, increase the contrast, what I did was I took that same black marker and just put a little dab of, of, of black pen over the hole where, the, um, where I think the electronic eye is that works out the exposure, just to block out a little bit of that light. So naturally what will happen is the camera will then overexpose the image. Um, so what should happen is we end up with a, a vignette with a slightly overexposed center. Now. The caveat for all this is that when you get 35mm colour film developed at your local lab, when they put it through the scanner machine to produce your prints, they'll automatically adjust the exposure again anyway. So what that tends to lead to is if you have a darker photo and they overexpose it, you know, they have to bring it up or it's overexposed and they have to bring it down, it tends to introduce grain into your photos as well, which is what we want because 
with a camera like this, we're not trying to capture, you know, that crisp thousandth of a second uh, view that we could get with our DSLRs or other cameras. We're trying to capture more of a moment, more of a mood, more than anything. Um, and we're doing that by, in fact, making the camera, you know, operate not quite as good as it could. Um, so other things you could also do is you maybe instead of using a black marker, you could use a coloured marker, like maybe maybe a brown one for like almost like a sepia effect around the edges. Um, you could put a coloured filter or colour in the flash, so when you're inside, it was it would put a colour on it. Um, you could cover up the exposure with uh, eye completely altogether, so it would totally overexpose your photos. Um, all those sorts of things just make it fun. But what will happen is though, you can guarantee no matter what you do to the lens, as long as it's within reason and the exposure, you'll always get photos out of it. Whereas if you've got like a mini Diana or one of those plastic fantastic Lobo cameras, you can't guarantee you're going to get any images out because they have light leaks and all this crap that goes, well, I call it crap, all this other stuff that goes on. So what you'll probably find is that you get some very nice photos. So what we'll do next is we'll just have a quick look at the photos I produced. Right, so Suzanne and Oliver are back from the gym, so you'll probably hear them in the background. But these are the kind of pictures um, I came up with the first roll. Now this is Kodak uh, colour film, just the cheap 200 speed stuff. But as you can see, and don't worry, I'll, I'll do close-ups of these at the end of the video. As you can see, you kind of you've got really nice, vivid, saturated colours as you'd expect. So this was on a, a beautifully sunny day, and then we have a nice vignette on the outside as well. There's a nice one of the. Uh, of uh, hovercraft. What else have we got here as well? That looks quite good. As you, you know, as you can see in this photo, you've got really lovely colours that are coming through. Nice bright in the centre, and then a nice vignette on the outside. There's me and Oz. And um, this is probably one of my favourites, actually, just to show you the the colour. You wouldn't expect that sort of saturation. Again, it's not super sharp. In fact, you can even say it's soft. But again, you get that lovely sort of vignette that saturates the colours and it looks like you know a natural vignette as well it doesn't look like something we've added and it makes it look like I've taken the photos with you know a vintage camera or a Lomo camera um, something that probably cost a lot more than the two to three pounds I actually spent on it Let's see if there's another one worth uh, having a looking at here we go and don't worry again I'll do this so again there's another one where you can see you know really nice colours and then you've got the vignette around the outside so that was my review of the Canon Sure Shot BF. I think I might have even done a review of the BF10 as well before. That's an, another nice camera. Um, I'd say if you see one at a charity shop or, or a thrift store or going cheap, pick one up. Don't spend more than a couple of quid. Make sure you check the battery compartment um, to make sure it hasn't uh, leaked or anything like that. Get some cheap 35mm film. Get a permanent marker. Do it, just do it around the edge of the lens just to give it a nice vignette. A little dab over the uh, electric eye in there, and you'd be, like, be really surprised by the quality of the shops you get. My name's Rob from RobLumphoto.com. Thanks for watching.